And so, of course, we have our early arrivals. We have David Beck, Frank Nook, and Axed. Uh, there was another Dave. Dave Wells was here earlier, and we've been uh, talking about food. And I almost kind of came on late because I was thinking about food. And, you know, in particular, barbecue food. So those of you watching on Instagram, welcome to. So new, we are streaming on Instagram right now. But, you know, Instagram screen is rather, you know, limited. So if I, you find me kind of going off the screen, probably best to head over to either YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch. Uh, you know, that's, that's where, you know, most of the people are. But if you prefer to watch on Instagram, that's fine too. So let's intro this project. Yeah, this is like the first stream of this very first summer project. And yes, we are kind of late into summer to be starting this. So we're gonna hustle, people. We're gonna hustle. And we have a new follower on Twitch. Welcome, Steve Awana. So you pretty much catching the, the very first stream of our project. So let me show you what we're going to build. And this is something that we planned, uh, me and all of you guys together on Discord. So if you are not on Discord, join. There's a link in um, YouTube. There's a link in the description in Facebook. If you're on Twitch, there's a panel. You Instagrammers, you know, get on over there as well. So here's the project that we're, you know, thinking about doing. So the idea here is this is called the Barbecue Cart Duino. And what's a, a cart Duino? And this is where we're gonna combine this cart with some Arduino features. Uh, perhaps a thermometer that we're gonna build ourselves. And I would also love to build some kind of robotic rover that carries condiments across the table like that because you know that the absolute worst thing is you got like a you know hands full of burgers and ribs and then somebody says can you please pass the barbecue sauce and you're like I can't put this down and you're like passing it with your elbow because your hands are all like gnarly so what if we had a robotic cart that just went up and down the table with all the condiments you can possibly ever want and need. So that's later in the build. Uh, you know, we don't wanna bite more than we can chew off. So today we're gonna build the frame of our barbecue cart. And this is what I love about, you know, this particular design that I found online. So we have a drawer. So this is nice for like little knickknacks, a place to store that eyesore of a extra you know, propane tank. Now I have a propane grill. I prefer charcoal, I am not gonna lie, but propane is, we all know, it's, it's just as easier, it's a little bit less messy, so I ended up going the propane route. So it'll be nice to kinda hide this. But this cart isn't quite hiding it, you know, it's, it's sheltering it a bit. So I wanna put a nice cabinet door on this, maybe something kind of rustic looking to match the rest of it. And then it's got two convenient shelves on the right hand side, a place to hang utensils and like a mini little spice rack. I don't know if you guys see it on that right hand side. So I definitely want to add that as well, because yeah, you definitely need your spices and your sauces when you're cooking. And so Steve, who recently joined us, is saying hello, hello back. And uh, Anax is saying I tweeterized the, the YouTube URL, uh, URL. So that's awesome. Thank you. And uh, he's also saying, it did look good, yes. And uh, Frank Fra Rick France is here again. Hi, Rachel. Uh, so Anax is asking, so is it going to be a robot barbecue cart? Temperature displays, maybe? Maybe, That's I hadn't thought of that. That's actually a pretty good idea. The original idea was to have the entire cart be a robot and move around, almost like, you know, at a restaurant when you get the little puck and that tells you when the table's ready, so the cart would come to you. But then I started thinking, a lot of our patios are like uneven, and that thing bringing the food, you know, and, and, and coming down some rocky patios might not be a good idea. So I decided to maybe make it stationary and add the robotic condiment caddy. So we, we always like to put a, you know, robotic thing in it. And Michelle is here. She is saying hello. Hello, Michelle. Also much earlier, some of you may have seen the Brazil crew joined. A lot of my family, you know, watch this stuff. So, olá pessoal do Brasil, a gente vai construir uh, a estrutura de um carrinho de churrascaria. Então, só, só a estrutura hoje é a gente vai acabar na próxima semana. 
All right, so just updating them on uh, what we're doing here. And uh, and Axe saying, makes sense. So he perhaps agrees with the fact that this, like, barbecue cart, we don't want it, like, going down the rocks and, you know, losing our precious, delicious food, you know. Uh, at that point, I subscribe to the five-second rule. So if that steak falls on the floor, you don't want it, I'll take it. I don't know. I'm, no shame. No shame. I'll take it. And Kurt Benning is here. Nice to see you again. He's saying hello. And uh, you know what? Let's get started. So enough. Uh, y'all, y'all know what, what's going on here. So let's get this thing started. And I think we should probably build this thing from the ground up. So let's build that base where the propane tank is sitting on first. And I really like this design online. And I figured, you know what? Why reinvent the wheel? It's the perfect size to complement my propane grill. I didn't want anything that was going to be like bigger than the propane grill. Just kind of like a side cart something that gives us more room and then next week uh this week we're building the frame next week we're going to finish it off with all the decor the drawers i was thinking of adding a flip up countertop you know so people can eat at it or you can have more display area so uh we'll, we'll we're going to take this base cart and then add on to it so brian henderson said hey there switch from instagram awesome yes i understand that instagram it's difficult to have like all the comments plus you know, it's, it's, you're kind of trapped in this little vertical, you know, view, view. So now you can see the entire table. So let's get building. I'm going to go get my pieces of wood that I pre-cut. They're all on the floor and we can start assembling that base. So hopefully I organized everything pretty well. Let's see. So let's see what this uh, what this looks like here. And for you guys, I will uh, make project plans once we build the frame and make sure it works. You know, let's make sure it works first before I start doting out like uh, project plans. Uh, now the project plan for that original cart, if you prefer that one, it is available. Uh, it's one of the first pictures that come up when you Google grill carts. Uh, so you should be able to find it. And there is an omission in the cut list. So I'm gonna to put together my cut list, which is very similar. And then you can use that plant if you prefer that cart. Uh, we're gonna you know, be uh, putting some, some more features on our cart uh, that you may not want. So let's see here. So we're gonna do kind of a base like this. I cut two, uh, I believe 29 and a half inch pieces of wood. Now this is Douglas fir. And anytime you go to the lumber store, you're going to see an option to use like um, treated lumber or studs, you know, anything like that. Now for anything that I'm going to eat on, um, I prefer not to use the treated kind. The treated kind has nasty chemicals. If you ever cut it, if you ever uh, sand it, don't burn it, you know, dispose of it in a different way. Those chemicals are really nasty. And in olden days, uh, you know, you can still find some treated wood that has arsenic in it. Uh, but all that does is just really help with the whole uh, preserving the wood against rot, against insects. So it's really great for an outdoor project. Uh, but because, you know, we're going to be serving and, and, you know, maybe having some food on this, I was kind of uncomfortable doing it that way. But for any other outdoor structures like decking and all that, yeah, definitely use the pre-treated stuff. So this is Douglas fir and portions of it are white wood stud. Now I prefer the Douglas fir and I'll show you guys why. I'm going to give you guys a much a uh, closer look here and I'm just going to tilt this forward. You can see that this Douglas fir has a sharper edge. It's more rectangular. Whereas the whitewood stud, see how more rounded that is? You don't get those sharper corners. Now, of course, you can put this through a planer and all that, but I don't have that, you know? And it's nice to, uh, I like to try and keep these projects for the everyday person uh, with basic tools that we can easily buy, uh, tools that you can then use over and over again for a variety of different projects. So let's see this is kind of like what I have here and let me see if the view is better we added a, a third camera view uh, for this and see if that's any better oh yeah look at that yeah see and you can see like the whole shop so you can see the wraparound cabinetry that uh, you know I made there and uh, it's looking 
know, looking pretty good, a little messy. You know, didn't didn't clean up too much before you guys showed up. But listen, we're all family, so I show you my mess, you show me your mess, right? So on with it. So what I've done here is I've pre-drilled pocket holes. Now, some of you for real woodworkers might be like, Ugh, pocket holes. But I love pocket holes because you can build so many things with them. It's really easy to learn, requires minimal tools. And all that is, is we're going to be drilling some pocket holes a little bit later on. But I figured to help kind of jumpstart us, uh, let me pre-drill a couple of them and then we can, uh, you know, pick up where I left off. So we have a couple pocket hole drills going on here. We're going to be putting some screws to screw them into place. So let me just uh, restart one of my chats here because I can see Facebook chat is uh, slowing down. So we have this and I have a couple notes here just so I remember to put this in the right order, which I get to talking to you guys and those of you that have been with me for a while know that things get screwed on backwards and upside down and you know it's all in just having good conversation so with these screws these are two and a half inch pocket hole screws and you're going to notice that they're blue and the reason for that is because they're coated uh, they're great for indoor and outdoor use so i kind of like leveled up to these they're you know a dollar more per box so i'm willing to make the sacrifice so, and I also have uh, some wood glue just for stronger joints and it's a little crusty. So let's, uh, let's decrustify this a little bit. It's kind of gross. Ew. Yeah. Glue crust. I don't know. I used to love glue as a, you know, growing up as a kid, but then as an adult, not so much. It's just, it just lost a lot of its magic. I don't know why. Uh, so, uh, and Max is, uh, all smiles and, uh, John Martin is saying, well, hey there. And I'm saying, hey, and I see that red, uh, Chevelle. So I know exactly who that is. Uh, awesome car dude, uh, John Martin. Haven't talked to you in a while. Hope your family is well. Uh, Michael Wasco is saying, whoa, 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 whoa. So, okay. Everybody's excited about this. So let's get to, uh, you know, gluing. So all I'm gonna do is put a little bit of glue on this end, like that, and kinda lay him right up against. And we're gonna try and get this as 90 degrees as possible. And I have a little, little cheater square. I'm using this little baby one. I usually use my bigger one. And the idea is just to try and get it let me see if I can back you guys up a little bit more as square as possible so there's a little bit of edging there a little gap I meant so that's pretty good there and normally I'm going to try and clamp this and uh, this is going to be too small so let's see if maybe one of my big mamma jamma clamps here will do the job. And let me try and do this without hitting you guys. That's always good, right? Not get hit in the head with a clamp. And Michael's saying, you're cool. Well, you're cool back for joining. You're even more cool for joining and watching this. Uh, sometimes it's pretty good. Other times some kind of atrocity unfolds, you know. So that's what uh, people like. It's uh, anything can happen. It's it's live and, and everything has happened. Those of you that have been with me a long time, we've seen some things, lightning strikes that last minute damages everything. And I'm trying to like make a show out of nothing, you know, because the lightning has basically fried our LED strip. So I've tap danced my way through a lot of shows before when things don't go quite right. So I have this pretty clamp down it's nice and tight so I can drive those pocket hole screws without this thing dancing around on me so let's give it a whirl let me switch out of this and put this one on and my usual glasses are not here so I'll wear these these have a little bit of a tint they're like sunglasses indoors I'm that cool <laughs> yeah and Roy Miller saying, nice to see you, miss you on All Girls Garage. Well, you can catch me now here just about every Monday. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
All right, so the screw has gone deep inside its hole, so we got one in. Let's get the other one in. And the nice thing is that this table is pretty flat, so we don't have to worry about, you know, crookedness. Building on the garage floor is a little bit strange because my garage floor slopes, like a lot of your guys' do, but it can slope by like four inches. So that's, that's a pretty decent slope. Now I realize that this is totally in my way, so now I'm moving it. And I'm gonna try now and make sure that this is square. Building these are simple. The part that takes the longest is, is it square? You know, did it twist when I drove the screw in? All right. Voila, so we got one, one leg down and Dale Benson is joining us. He's saying howdy. Dave Wells has got the shades. He's like, you know, this project is super cool. Um, so, I mean, that's how I'm interpreting it. So I'm going to move this a little bit, you know, out of the way and perhaps give you guys kind of a, a wider view of what's going on. And I want to remove these little slap pieces. They're just kind of in the way. And let's get these guys screwed down this leg over here and same deal. Let me not forget my glue, which is, you know, by the computer and that's totally makes sense. So get a little glue on there and sometimes it's nice to put glue inside where the screw goes into so that's always a good idea but I'm going to refrain from that right now because I literally kind of put this together real quick and I can't guarantee that you know halfway into the build I'm gonna be like uh oh we need to unscrew something so just in case we need to unscrew something I'm not going to to put the glue and in order to make ours really uh, to withstand the elements, we're going to be using either a weather resistant stain or paint. And that'll protect this whole thing once we're done. So let's make sure that it is straight. And that's looking pretty good. Maybe this needs to bow a little more out. It, the legs need to give me a little more room here. And everything is flush, looking good. So yeah, let's get cracking here. And again, it may be I have some uh, wood chips in the way. Away with you, vi wood chips. And my dogs are super excited. They're like, finish up this cart because I want scraps to fall on the floor. I want hot dogs, steaks. <laughs> and all the deliciousness. Let's see if I can do this without the clamp and you know, I got one in there so perhaps it won't dance around on me so much. And now, it's like, where's the screws at? Where's the screws at? In my face is where the screws are at. That's the worst. When I can't find my glasses, the first place I look, I start doing this because I know it's already on my head. All right, so we got our two legs on. So let's put in our slats. And the idea with the slats is that this is where our grill is gonna sit on. And I am building this kind of backwards. It probably should be more like this. <clears throat> there we go. More like the picture. I'm just going to make sure no one's at the door. I'm going to put you guys on a quick intermission. Be right back.
All right, I am back. I'm actually expecting casters for this project. So I'm like super excited it might come in. <laughs> so let's get this done, right? So I'm gonna do the one on the end first. Nice, tight fit. That's the way I like it. That's the way I like it. It means our cuts were really good. So again, if you are on Instagram, the view might be a little strange. I might, you know, kind of come in and out of view. The comments are also very difficult to see. So I am also streaming on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. So a little bit easier to see comments on there. And Dave Beck is saying Ripley wants to help build. She indeed does. Uh, that's part of all the barking. She doesn't like to be locked out of the shop. But she's also a little bit like a bull in a china shop. So we let her in here, like all these cameras going down. All of them. So I'm not really making sure this is too square because everything is like lining up. So I made some mad cuts. Mad cuts. Super proud. All right. All right, one more here. And again, this is the floor base. Uh, if we want to put wheels, they go under here and, you know, this would be a little bit more lifted up. And we're going to make that decision together uh, in a little bit here. But first, let me finish putting this base together. My drill wants to become one with the grill cart table. It's like maybe some food will fall on me. It's super delish. It's like I am bored. I am one. I'm assimilated into this grill cart. All right, so we have a base. Check that out. Yeah, we can put, you know, wheel, wheel, caster, caster. Uh, but I kind of like the grill cart design that it's two casters. And then on the other side, the wood goes all the way down to the floor. Now, originally, I wasn't too thrilled with that. But again, the more I thought of it, if you're on an uneven patio surface, having those two wooden legs just to kind of solidify, you can shim it if you need to so it doesn't rock back and forth. Wheels are a little bit tougher to shim, even when they have wheel locks on. So I'm kind of leaning towards, you know, adapting that idea. And let me just look at my notes as to where this goes. All right, it goes here. Right? I'm asking you guys like you guys know. But trust me, a lot of you probably know better than me. So I'm going to try and... Uh, clamp this together just to really the clamp that never ends there we go and oh, I can't reach you guys there we go you can see what I got going on here I have my two pocket holes which screw into here here I measured 13 inches from uh, the bottom here so all this up to here is 13 inches and then this is 15 inches this is just to help me uh, put where the support beams are gonna go so uh, I tried to like put these marks on beforehand so I just you know had it in mind before uh, you know just trying to wing it too much with you guys now I like to wing things but sometimes I try and aim for some degree of accuracy there we go another one and sometimes you do have to use kind of weird positions so you see how those pocket holes go right in and we're going to be drilling a couple pocket holes in a little bit uh, just ourselves And this is gonna be kind of odd, so what I may end up doing is just twisting this around, you know, for my own 
for my own sanity so I can drill it a little more comfortably. I don't know if that's any more comfortable though. So let's see, oh, there you are. Down periscope and you are lined up with your line there, good. Be helpful if there's a screw in here, you know? Just uh, going in with the drill with nothing. So we can now see that we have, you know, more of a base going on. And so, you know, putting a gas grill kind of sitting on here, there's still not enough support. So I went ahead and cut additional slats that we can put in. So even something like this having three slats, I thought, yeah, you know, maybe not great still. So why not a fourth? So now we have four like that. And sometimes when you do these, they do get a little tight. So you either have to chop off a little more or do like I do, use brute force. And then if you can't get it to go, then you must consult the negotiator. And the negotiator, I keep him nearby. He pretty much negotiates everything into place. There's nobody questions him. So we'll see if we got to bring him out. Right, people? So let's start. I'm going to try. There's no real measuring here. Those of you that have been with me, we know we don't kind of don't measure. This is the most measuring I've done in a very long time. And so uh, Brian Henderson is agreeing with me. Winging it is great, especially with Frank's red hot sauce. Why, yes, sir. You are quite correct there. Uh, and Axe is saying, or you could put in, put big all-terrain wheels on it, have the first off-road condiment cart. Oh, don't tempt me. You know what happened with our lightning detector. That project light just kept getting bigger and bigger. And so you know I go there. So the idea here is I'm not really measuring. I'm just kind of like centering them so they're kind of equidistant, you know. Uh, so that guy looks good there. I'll just put some, some glue. And I hope I didn't, you know, forget the glue on the other ones, but I think I got it. Got a little, little dust still going on. So let's see if I'm able to see. They see the negotiator nearby. And it's funny how everybody just, uh, you know, gets on their best behavior. So sometimes you don't even have to use it. It's like a breaker bar, uh, you know, to take off old lug nuts. If you just bust it out, you know, that's usually enough to kind of put the fear uh, in in a lot of your projects that one got a little mouthy so that's what happens when you get mouthy you get beaten upon all right so let's put these in and then our base is done people look we are rocking through this thing rocking through rocking through Oh, that one already has theirs. There I go again. Double. Double screwing. Double screwing. I can shift it just a tiny bit oh, for our purposes. That's fine. Whoop. Not the best position. Let me make this easier on myself. What do you say, people? I need a bigger uh, work table, a bigger workbench. There we go. No, don't fall out. Stay there or the negotiator is coming for you. All right, let's see if I can squeeze around. back you out. Let me back you out. It probably went slightly crooked. And so it just got upset. There we go. Sometimes it just got, went a little askew. And we have how many more? Sometimes you got to peek down 
the hole to make sure you haven't put any in. So there's one in there. So we got one more over here. And the negotiator, he can have his rest. We pay him the big bucks for that reason. You know, it's kind of like that baseball hitter. Pay him the big bucks, comes in, does a slam dunk, and he can go back, back on the bench. And let's switch you guys up just a little bit here. I'm coming right at you. Right, and I see more of you guys joining on Instagram. I know it can be a little tough to see. So like I've uh, uh, told the previous Instagram people, I'm also streaming on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. So you can head over there, get a bigger view. Uh, also, probably easier for me to read your comments. It's a, it's, a, it's a little tough on such a tiny screen. And so here we have it. We have our, you know, base. Check that out. So it's going to probably... Be more like the other way but anyways this will be facing up like this and we're going to be actually no, it's going to be facing up like this we're gonna put the pretty side up and we're going to have these slats this is where our uh, propane tank will sit in that cubby hole here's where we're going to put you know perhaps um, you know maybe some shelving here on this side I haven't decided yet. Let's take another look at what this uh, cart here looks like. Ah, yeah, so we can see, see those slats? Those slats are a little bit different. They are from cedar picket fences, which is another really popular material to use for decor pieces for outdoor furniture. Uh, they're strong, they last long, they can weather the elements, the insects rot, all that kind of stuff, and they're inexpensive. So that's for next stream. We're gonna be adding our picket fencing decor. So that's what's gonna cover this area so our plates and our you know deliciousness doesn't fall through the hole. You know, but five second rule, five second rule. You know, I'm eating that. You know, if you don't eat it, I'll eat it. So I'm gonna put this aside because we are finito with this. And now we're gonna build the top that supports our countertop. So I'm gonna grab those pieces of wood there real quick. And, you know, move this uh, clamp here out of the way. Maybe I'll just put it in the way right there. So when I come with the wood, it'll be in the way. All right. So we're pretty much going to repeat a lot of what we did. We got our 29 and a half pieces, our little slats here, and, you know, our, our other piece. So I'm just going to quickly rock through this. And uh, just looking at my notes to myself to make sure I didn't change up. Yes, that's that's how I had it. Yes, and here's our 13-inch mark right there. Give you guys a, a bigger view. And this is 13 inches from the bottom right here. So that 13 inches, remember, is going to match up with the 13 inches on the base. Hopefully, you know, hopefully. You know how I measure. Doesn't always match up. So in order for me to drill this more comfortably to myself, I will just kind of flip this around real quick. And you'll notice a boo-boo. What the heck? We've been seeing the two. I totally spaced out and I just went drilling holes and didn't pay attention to what I was doing. It happens. And luckily this time it didn't happen during the stream, which is when it usually happens. You know, I've spaced out plenty during the stream. Or I get to yapping with you guys and we're just sitting there drilling a whole bunch of pocket holes. So let's see, that's looking pretty good. I have my square and let me see if I can give you guys a slightly, you know, slightly better view. And let's glue away. Oh, this has got a sticker on it. Let's get rid of this sticker. There we go. And it's got a staple, which is gonna jack up my fine cuts. I made some fine cuts here. I didn't see you staple before. I'm trying to sneak in and jack up my measurements. Because then you're like, why isn't this thing sitting flush? Oh, because there's a staple popped out of it. Popping out slightly. So, a little glue on the end here. And then we just have to unite the bottom and the top pieces. And we got a frame cart, people. A frame cart. So, same thing. Just going to use this square to make sure it lines up. This is where I start to get a little bit scared because the project is going way too well. This is not, this is not the way it normally goes, all right? 
Just telling you guys. Don't expect this to go this way to the end. Alright. Oh, and that's what happens when you don't clamp it together. The two pieces slid apart. So, see that's what happens. I get to talking to you guys and then and then and then and then I forget to do things. What was I just saying about things going way too well? Yep, yep. Gotta rely on Rachel to botch it up. <laughs> Throw a wrench in it. All right, and so Anax is saying he loves the Kitty Nebula uh, t-shirt. And he totally called me, uh, Dave Wells is saying, don't jinx it. He heard me say that and he, because he watches these all the time and he knows what happens when I start to, ooh, this is going too well. Then it doesn't go so well, you know, and it doesn't go so well real quick. So he got me. Dave Wald knows, knows the deal. So does David Beck, the two Daves. They, they know what's, what's up. And where's Jell at? He's usually here on, on Mondays. Oh, and number one, uh, number one showed up. He's got a comment. I'll get to you in a second, number one. And so he is asking, where do the copper pipes with holes drilled out for the dry ice to make the smoke go? Oh, he is stepping this project up already. I like where this is going. We could do like a cool steampunk uh, grill cart. We just did a steampunk project, but, you know, more steampunk is always good. You know, who doesn't like steampunk? And we can do like cool steam and maybe it can like smoke our meats. He's thinking dry ice, which would be awesome for drinks. But we can also do like a smoking thing with copper pipe, make it look all steampunk. So um, I've been now uh, 2.0. Susa is asking uh, in Portuguese if these are treated. Então não, essas madeiras não são tratadas. Porque madeira tratada tem muito veneno. Se você vai comer com um prato de comida, não é muito bom. Então não é tratada, mas eu vou pintar para proteger da chuva, da, you know, da neve, tudo isso. All right. So, I was explaining to him that this wood is not treated, but I will be painting it or staining it with weather resistant paints or stains. So, we add a little bit of durability to it. Although the Douglas fir is pretty, it's pretty good. It's gonna last us a good deal. So let me uh, get this measured up and get it just aligned, just right. And this time, not forget, not forget the clamp. It's like, where are you at? There you are. I got my, uh, these are my Terminator shop glasses. Hasta la vista pocket holes one of my favorite movies i love number two i think i love number two more than i love number one uh very few times you love a sequel more than the original but i love me number two all right and got this one i always like a little glue popping through And then before I paint it, I always like to just do a once over with the sander to make sure you sand all the glue off. So that way the stain looks really, really good. And we do have some oozing and I have a paper towel. I have all kinds of goodies underneath the table here. So I am just going to de-ooze the, the glue here. That's a lot less than I'm gonna have to sand later on. There, and it's not rocking, so that means we're getting this pretty, pretty straight, which is good. Like sometimes when you start doing woodworking and the whole piece is rocking a little bit, then you know some something, something's off, you know. So, and in act saying more memorable lines, uh, Terminator Two, he's referring to, and I agree. Terminator Two definitely had more memorable lines. I think that's you know why why we love it so much. So I'm like putting this like all. All over the place and get it completely out of the way <laughs> there we go and I think for this maybe I'll switch I need some wide angles going on for some of these bigger projects and I'm just gonna put its little end on here 
Make sure, is that what I'm doing? Yes, yes, that's, that is what I'm doing. All right. Do we need the negotiator? We do not. See, I didn't even bust him out because I thought, you know, probably don't need him. And let's see if it'll help to just kind of clamp this guy down here. So the white wood studs that I'm using, it's kind of, I had it, an extra one left over, so I figured, you know what, I use it up instead of, you know, buying all just new. Sometimes I find scraps, I'm like, we can use it up, and by the time it's painted, it's not as durable as the Douglas fir, but by the time it's painted, it, it'll be fine, you know. Uh, that's one of the reasons why they use untreated wood for your house framing. You would think, well, if treated is so lasts so long, why not use it for the whole house? It's because of the nastiness, the nasty chemicals in it. So I'm gonna leave that stuff for outdoor. And one more. Or two more after this one. I lie. Look at my lying right to your face. Right. And let's see if I can somehow move this in a way that I can not have to T-Rex my arms in order to screw this down. And without knocking over the gear or equipment, which is happens more often than than I like. All right, so I can uh, get these guys here. Let's see. Pull this into view for you guys a little bit better. Yeah, we're not getting too much rocking, which is good. It means everything is. Uh... Wait, am I about to screw it up? Oh, I was about to screw it up. I was about to put screws where there were already screws. Double screwing. Double screwing. Right. These are our last, and then we have one more slat, and then this is done. So remember, we're only at the beginning of this project. If you guys have ideas, suggestions, like some of you are already throwing in, like, hey, copper pipes, uh, and, and all that. So throw them in, you know? I try and add as many of them as I can. is a bit in the way so I'm gonna move this it's not giving me a good angle let's see if I can get a better angle on this thing like that there we go and there so you know again we're not getting too much rocking here so pretty good pretty straight there and you know, maybe, maybe a little bit maybe a little bit but I think we're good I think we're good and uh, we have one more to put here at my 30, uh, 13 inch mark here. And I want to put it over here, yes. So this one we might have to negotiate just a little bit. And I see more of you guys pouring onto uh, Instagram. If you're watching on Instagram, I know it's just like really hard to see the whole project. So this is also being continuously streamed or simultaneously streamed on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. So you can head on over there if you wanna see more of the project and not be confined, you know, and also much easier to see your, your comments. Um, ooh, this one might be needed to be negotiated pretty good. This is tight, guys, look at this. I might actually have to cut this down just slightly. I'm not giving up yet. The negotiator, ladies and gentlemen, the negotiator, you know, he gets paid all the fees, all the high fees, and then I, I take the scrap. So the negotiator's got a big old rider. He's like, I only work for like five minutes at a time, and then I'm done. And for that, I $5,000. <laughs> so, 
Stay hydrated, people. All right. Ooh, that went down the wrong way. Let's get this done. <coughs> oh, that went really down the wrong way. All the way down the wrong way. And let's see. And Asta's saying what might be good might be a chiller section. Maybe just running off ice. Ooh. Yeah, for like shrimp and stuff. You can have a shrimp, crab claws, and a place to chill it. And again, for this, I'm just gonna turn it that way, make things a little easier. If I did this one, did I do this? One? Yep. There we go. So we got the top done, and so this is where our countertop is gonna screw into. So let's build the in between stuff. The in between stuff. So let's figure that out. And we do have somewhat of a puppy, so periodically I check on her. So that is what I'm gonna do right now and I'm going to grab the rest of the wood for us to get this done. So I think, no, we're not ready for that yet. We're going to build the two stilts that are going to hold the top and the bottom together. And then guys, we're kind of like, we're rocking through this, I think. Yeah. So I will be like right back. I'm just going to make sure the puppy isn't shredding something she shouldn't be shredding. So all y'all going on intermission, Instagram people just hang out for like five minutes, five minutes. Right, people I am back and refresh my drink yes it gets dry in here with all the the wood cutting and all that oh and I forgot the wood so I'm gonna grab that real quick by not putting you guys on intermission sneak a sneak all right so we need a way now to connect this portion here. Let's see what my notes say. Yes, so this is gonna totally be in the way. But in essence, just so you guys can kind of picture what we're doing. I need a bigger table. So this is where our propane tank is gonna be. And remember, we're gonna have like a little drawer situation up here. So we need like a structure to put this drawer situation. So I figure, you know, we can build something like this and like that, you know, and repeat on the same side. And of course these need some kind of support, you know, somewhere in the middle so the drawer has something to rest on. So that's kind of you know, the idea of what we're doing now. And let me put, and this is where we're gonna drill pocket holes because this is the part that I didn't quite get to the whole pocket hole situation. 
So let me see, according to my notes, where the pocket holes are. All right, so I might as well drill them all in one sweep and then we'll build it all just like we did. So let's rock out these pocket holes. And for that, I'm gonna switch out the bit and put this bit on. So this is what's gonna drill our pocket hole. I don't know if I've ever done pocket holes live with you guys before. So here we go. And I have our pocket hole jig right here and it's set to cut uh, for material that's one and a half inches, uh, one and a half inches in thickness. Now, this is, these are two by fours, you know, but that's the common dimensions. The real dimensions are typically half an inch less. So a two by four is really a one and a half by a three and a half, you know, for reals. So you have to use the for reals uh, measurements uh, when setting your pocket hole screws. So I'm just gonna do two holes. And let me see if I can fit this guy in here somehow, some way, yes. So basically, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna drill through here, and then I'm gonna move him just a little bit and then drill through this guy. Uh, if you're cutting really narrow pieces of wood, you can just drill one and one. It makes your life a ton easier. But unfortunately for this, I'm probably gonna have to move it to the end of the table. There we go, the end of the table so I can have more leverage with the clamp. So let's see, can you guys see me over here? Not really, but maybe you can see me like this. Probably not the best view, but I'll try and rock out these uh, holes here real quick. And since you're here, you have volunteered, and all I'm doing is just gonna clamp the jig down to the piece of wood here and make sure it doesn't budge too much so let's get these holes done that's one and we'll put you over here now, Instagram people, I know you can't see hella nothing, you know, so I am on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch right now. All right, and pocket hole screws make a ton of mess. Huge, huge mess. So just get ready. Like, I'm going to put the pile over here. So this is something that typically I like to do outside, but we are indoors today. Plus, you never know the rain situation, so I always like to try and get a lot of this stuff done ahead of time, just in case it rains during our stream, and I'm just making sure that I'm doing this correctly. They need a phone with like a wide angle Instagram lens or something like that. There we go. So that's one done. I like to get all the the little wood chips out of there because then you try and screw through and it gets all gummed up all gummed up but as you can see let me degum let me degum as you can see we got two pocket hole screws one a two on each side so i'm going to repeat that literal same thing with this piece of wood right here and the pocket hole jigs are really inexpensive and it's one of the first things I started to learn to use when I first started in fact this entire workbench right here was my very first woodworking project and I didn't use pocket holes I just went right in with the screw and you know what it works it's still doing its thing but pocket holes are nice because they hide a lot of your joints they look a little bit more professional and then it's it's a good first step to learning other joint techniques And I saw Dave 
David Beck's uh, comment earlier, don't jinx it because then the drill will break. And that has literally happened, not the drill breaking, but the battery going on it. But luckily I always keep a spare charge, right? Well, not this time. It turns out mysteriously, the battery got kind of knocked a little bit off the charger so it wasn't quite charged. So I have drill, two batteries, none of them charged. That was a great stream. So he knows what he's talking about. I get all excited, this is going really well. And then something just bizarre happens. Travels a little bit. Sometimes these guys I've got to get them even tighter than that. All right, Terminator arm. The wood knows. It's like, yes, I'm dealing with somebody with the strength of two wet noodle arms. That's about it, you know, so they try stuff on me. So I just got this side to do and our long pieces are done. No real good to wait. I need like a, you know what guys? I need a head camera. That would be pretty cool. Like a helmet cam or something like that. So you get the bird's eye view. That would be cool. I'm thinking about that. One more. And I'm gonna have lots of vacuuming to do here in a bit. But I might procrastinate. I might do it tomorrow. All right, so that's it for pocket holes on these guys. Just uh so we don't have so much wood chips inside our pocket holes and then we have this guy which yes I put pocket holes on him like this so he's gonna get two on either end as well so I'm gonna let me rock those out real quick then we're gonna start putting some stuff together Let it snow, but instead, it's all wood chips. Let's see, maybe I can read and drill at the same time. That's either going to be super cool or super disastrous. And David Beck is saying, um, peanuts glassware, I bet. Indeed, you are correct. So, Abenal from Brazil, 2.0 Souza, is saying he doesn't have this thing. Um, you know, he can't find something like this uh, to do it. You really don't need a pocket hole um, rig for this. If you just drill a pilot hole at an angle, that'll work too. And then use a two and a half to three inch wood screw. You're good. So this just makes it look a little nicer, a little more pro, but this entire table was not built with pocket hole screws. It was just screwing it right in. So let's see. Love the glass. Haven't seen one of those since I was seven. So true. That's what the Constance is saying. Isn't that right? I love the peanut stuff. I always collect them. If I see like sets of them, I remember McDonald's, you know, I think used to have them as part of their promotions back in the day. They had like the uh, Transformers, all of that stuff. So now we're going to put this together. 
So, f <laughs> and uh, Dave Wallace is saying you can get a camera in your safety glasses. That would be pretty cool. Or set up a camera over the workbench looking down. I thought about clamping one to the edge. It, it vibrates a little, you know, while we're pounding away. But, you know, I don't think it's to the point that it would make anyone, like, sick, you know, or anything like that. Um, uh, no, then you can, can't see Rachel. Well, you know, it's just it's temporary, people. It's temporary. It's temporary. All right, let me see if I can uh, put this over here. I'm going to clamp it to the edge of the table just to get it out of the way temporarily. <clears throat> and let me just look at my notes here, how high. Aha, six inches. Okay, so... So what I'm gonna do is mark something that is six inches from the top. Let me see if I can give you guys a much better, a better dealio here. So let's mark a six inch because that's gonna be the space for our drawer. And this is gonna be a little drawer for like small knickknacks because we're gonna put our larger items on hooks. So that's my six right there. And let's just get this thing. Not a huge fan of this particular one because of the level, which is great to have, but it kind of makes this not sit 100% straight. But good enough to get our mark. Now I'm just gonna double check. <gasps> Guys, snapshot this. You will never see this. You are seeing Rachel measuring twice. This never happens, people. So take pictures, screenshots. This You'll never see this again. So I'm gonna do the same thing here and measure up or maybe just kind of as long as they're straight just continue the line there we go well, that's pretty good and just because i did the other side give you guys another snapshot opportunity that rachel is actually measuring i know david beck is offended like no i can't see this i cannot even see the fact that you have measured so now what we're going to do is put this guy, I'm gonna face the pocket holes out like this. And we're gonna put this guy with the pocket holes. This is not uh, great. Let me see if I can give you guys a much better view. So what I'm doing is putting these two support beams with pocket holes to the outside. And you might be saying, ugh, pocket holes to the outside, won't you see them? Well, we're gonna be covering the outsides with our pretty cedar picket fences and creating little slats out of them. So they're gonna be hidden. And because the drawer is right here, and I'm gonna pull up the drawer, and then the, um, the propane tank is gonna be sitting down here, I'm gonna face these pocket holes up towards the drawer because the drawer is always going to hide them whether the drawer is in or the drawer is out you'll never see these pocket holes versus if I put them down here I mean you can't really see them anyways let's this we're splitting hairs right now you know but if one were to tuck their head in to the cubby hole they would be like ew pocket holes you know now showing pocket holes for me personally is not offensive I, I really don't care if some certain pocket holes are seen inside cabinets. You know, some people really try and hide them all the way around, which is, you know, the super pro way to, to do stuff. And then there's the Rachel way of doing stuff. So let's see, we want the top of this to be at our six mark. Yes, so basically the top of this, I'm just lining it up with our six inch mark that I just did. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue our situation here and I'm going to start with this side uh, closest to you guys and like right here let's get this done and now this is where it doesn't help having all of these um, dusts or chips because then it makes this kind of uneven so I'm gonna um, do this at the risk of all the splinters Ooh, don't splinter me table don't splinter me there we go. Now we are ready again. There we go. See how that's sitting much better and not rocking around. That's what we like. So let's get this guy. Sometimes when you glue it and you just give it a couple minutes to really set up just a little bit, it gets a little more gummy. It holds itself in place pretty well. And I'm gonna move this out of the way for now. And I'm gonna go back to our clamp. Now will this one do it? 
No, still too short, still too short. So let me just get more crap out of the way. Go back to this big old giant one. Maybe like this, yeah. Sorry, Instagram people, don't mean to hit you. So that way it's not poking me in the stomach, it's poking you guys in the stomach. Just lining it up with the line, making sure that this wood here is not like twisting or anything. So that way our poor little shelf won't be all twisted. And where, let's see if this is square. Looking good, people. Looking good. And I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. Let's screw it in. And you guys probably won't get the greatest view here, but just imagine the finest screwing in of screws you have ever seen. Magical scene in your heads. It's gonna go perfectly. I'm going in crooked. I think that's good guys. No movement, no movement. All right, we're good, we're good. Final one on this side. Let me put the other leg on. And it would help not putting the screw in the hole that you just put a screw in, right? I mean, that's what I hear. There we go. So we have a fine piece of wood. Screw it to another piece of wood. Yes. So for those of you just joining, especially on Instagram, we are building a barbecue grill cart. And uh, this is going to be paired with some cool Arduino electric or tech features and uh, then after that we're gonna grill up some some fine steaks on this thing so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna go ahead and just glue add a little bit of glue and line up at our six inch mark here now I'm gonna line up the top and make sure nothing's twisted and get it clamped down I'm gonna do this, I think I liked it this way. I'm gonna do this the same way. Poke you guys in the stomach rather than poking me in the stomach. All right, I'm gonna untwist this. There. Making sure our poor drawer is gonna be aligned properly with our square. Perfect people. Let me get this drilled in and then we just have to build another one like this and uh, assemble the two halves together. And one more. This is kind of an awkward, awkward position. doesn't fit in the uh, opening that wasn't the greatest planning but I think I can get it in or I can flip it that way the hole is on top versus on the bottom and that should fix the problem right right see so how I got only one in so you can do you know this sort of thing so I need to get this guy here 
who's showing. I need to get him in. So let's see if I can kind of put them on like a skirt and see if I can get in here. You always got a fighter, you know, right when you're in the home stretch, you get a fighter on you. So all we're going to do is rebuild another one of these. So we have two of them, one in front and one in back here. And our drawer can come in out of here and our propane tank fits right in here. And then we're going to unite the bottom half and the top half and our frame is done. Oh, we probably need a shelf too. That's pretty easy. So I'm just putting all these pieces of wood completely in my way so I can't get to the other pieces of wood. So I'll be right back. They're like right there. We're just going to repeat what we've done. Here I come back. All right. Now, I didn't, uh, usually when there's doubles of things, I do pre-assemble, but I didn't, I'm going to be honest with you people, I didn't know 100%, you know, that I quickly chicken scratch everything right on my napkin and that it was going to come out right. So I'm like, you know what? I better not just in case I have to sacrifice some pieces of wood for, you know, mistakes or I forgot this step or, you know, anything like that. So let me make sure this is my 13 and a half inch piece. So we're going to start with pocket holes all over again and do two and two and two and then assemble just like we did. So a little repetitive, but let's see if we can rock through it real quick so we can finish our, you know, our frame here. And Antoine uh, is saying he tried to build a table once and it stood up for two days and knocked over. Listen, you are not alone, Antoine. All of us, all of us can relate to that. I'm still happy this very first woodworking project of mine, this... Uh, uh, workbench that I'm working on is still standing turned out pretty solid and just using some regular old wood screws I'm trying to talk over the re -re 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 of the of the clamp let me uh pocket hole this situation right here real quick one down I like to leave these builds open-ended for you guys because that leaves a lot of room for you guys to add in your own suggestions and make the project ours. You know, it's not my project, it's our project. In fact, it was you guys that came up with the idea for this drill cart. I posted a bunch of ideas. You guys came back with some ideas and, uh, you know, it looked like the drill cart won out. Most of you guys voted for this. So we went in this direction. So constantly post up your ideas don't forget to check out discord join my discord because that's where we do a lot of our planning discussions i had to concentrate there for a second and any cool projects you'd like to see definitely throw them in the you know throw them in the hat Starting this month, French Army members get their very own project. We are turning a regular light bulb, and I'm trying to find the biggest one I can find, into a plasma bulb. And then we're going to find a cool way to display it. So it looks like the going theory, what most of you guys want to see, is like some kind of table lamp, you know, with a dragon. So yes, a dragon has been requested. So we're going to try and incorporate a dragon in this build. So this is for Wednesdays. And I got one more on this side. And then I'll continue telling you about it. All right, so Wednesdays we have our Wrench Army streams, much like this, but they get their own uh, project, which is not then, you know, made to the public. Like I post 
you know, pictures of the completed project and stuff, but it's super secret. Uh, so there's information on how to join Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitch. You'll see all the info there and check out uh, what, what all the goodies and stuff that you get. And I got two more pocket hole screws on this side. All right. One more. All righty. So that is done. And then we just got the little support beam in the middle. Our drawer support I'm trying to like do it over on this side so we don't get it in our work area although this is kind of all of our work area so let me put our four pocket hole screws here two on each side and once we finish this you guys have to start putting in what's the first thing we're gonna grill on this thing what is the first thing And uh, Scotty Bryan has a really good recommendation. Uh, I found that to be true myself. So he's saying I highly recommend torque head sc wood screws. So much easier to work with than a Phillip head. That is very, very true. So this workbench was built entirely, I believe, with yeah, with, uh, you know, the Phillips head style. And there's a lot of slipping and stripping and, you know, all that kind of stuff. For whatever reason, I mean, I don't know why I wouldn't think so until I just, you know, it was the only one I could find that I can get in time was the Torx head one. So I was like, yeah, fine, I'll use those. So much easier. They went, obviously, with a pilot hole. They went in, for whatever reason, just like butter, way more than a Phillips. So there must be some kind of physics lesson in there, which... Now I'm super curious. I'll have to look into why that is. And Inax is saying everything is better with dragons. That is for real, right? We should make like a creme brulee on this grill cart and the fire coming out of it comes out of a dragon's mouth or something. I'm sure we can like tube, put a tube through like a dragon looking thing and have it just whoosh torch out some fire for some creme brulee. Now we're adding dragons to all the builds. All right, so there we go. And I'm going to perhaps use this and the audio must be atrocious, you know, so might want to turn down a little bit. I'm going to try and sweep this. All right, we're done. And let me out. Oh, no, no splinters, no splinters on the hands, no splinters, please. There we go. And that's the worst. You keep doing it because you keep being rewarded by not having splinters. So what did I say? Six inches, right, was what we measured. This one didn't even have lead from the other side yeah that looks that looks six ish to me so it was six right guys right guys yeah i'm going with it and slippery pencil all right so i'm going to do the same to this other one here I'm just going to put him side by side. And we'll just kind of borrow from the line here by going the other side. I'm just matching it up. Just like that. And that's quick, people. Grab a screenshot. I'm measuring. Grab a screenshot. There we go. Hope you did. So what I'm going to do now is put the pocket holes facing out like that. And the line is right here. And I'm going to put the pocket holes of this guy facing this way. 
because our drawer situation will be here and these pocket holes will be hidden by the drawer rather putting them down here where if you peek inside the cubby hole you'll still see them so i think i'm gonna, I'm gonna do this and if i recall the tops of these have to line up so let me glue away and Axe is confirming my six so good because we are about to do this so somebody has confirmed it twinkies wait a minute dave beck can you gr i mean this is a stupid question of course you can grow anything anything but twinkies i've never done that before oh that sounds really good i've heard of oreos you know you can uh, fry up Oreos and stuff, but Twinkies. Oh, yes, I did this such that it uh, pokes, pokes you guys in the belly. Not me. All right, let's try and get this lined up with our six-inch mark. And right there. So this is where the six-inch mark is here, and so I see the line. that a nice tight squeeze and let's check out how we're looking not much movement there at all so we are square and uh, the only thing with these heavy clamps is it tends to want to tilt the project this way so I'm going to try and have to kind of maybe hold it with my rib and uh mm, ribs oh yeah no one said ribs yet as to what they'd want and uh, and I'm saying at least it's not in 360. Yes. <laughs> and Abba now is saying, um, uh, oh, he's a buy un cafezinho, sto tomando uma uma xícara. Mmm. So we have Abba now who's sipping away some coffee. He's saying while watching this. So all right. So I didn't put any in yet. See, I get to yapping with you guys and I forget. Did I screw anything in yet? I don't know. Oh, there we go. So basically I fish around until I kind of feel where the, the hole is and it kind of goes in and sits itself pretty well, situates itself, I should say. And there we go. And here we don't have that other side. Uh, so it makes it much easier to screw in this first set. There, I talk too much. It'll be easy and now it won't go. go and still no movement here so we're still square and because we don't have like I was trying to say this piece still on this side we can get this bottom one without having to flip it but once that side piece goes on then the drill doesn't have enough clearance and some of you woodworkers um, I don't know if there's a shorter one of these and that's part of the problem look how long it is I guess I could use a very short, just square bit too. It doesn't have to be the dedicated pocket hole square bit. And, all right, there was a little movement, but nothing that uh, affected anything too much because this rocks a little bit, so it's tough. Tough to get it on there. Merlin's saying, I like hot dogs. I love hot dogs too. They're a simple food, but they are just so good. And uh, David is, uh, in Texas, we can barbecue anything. Oh, I do not doubt that. Last time I was in Texas, I went to a place, I believe it was called Crazy Age or something like that, but it was just like a vat full of meats. And you got to pick what meat you wanted and they just served it up on your plate. And boy, I overpicked. I overpicked the meat. It did not fit entirely in the belly. It was a shame. I was like, no, all the meat must fit in the belly. I do this without poking you guys in the stomach. Now that we're all thinking about meat and meat bellies, the last thing I want is to be poked in my meat belly stomach. All right, so probably should have turn this another way just to make it a little bit easier right Maybe like that oh now it's in my belly yeah. there we 
go. There we go. I got through it. I sucked it in. I sucked it in enough. So, I need to get in here now. And with all that movement, let's just double check that we're, we're okay. Loosen it just a tad. There we go. And shift a little bit. thing square and yep we got no movement there so I'm going to go ahead and clamp down it just budged a little bit just that there we go a little budge all right so let's get these two screws in and we are done with our supports and let me see if I can situate it in its little hole there we go Make our life a little bit easier. Now the other one is probably going to be a little tough because of our clearance situation, but I might be able to get it started. And Dave Beck is confirming there is a shorter one of these. I suppose, you know, you can just use a regular square bit driver. This is the one that came with the kit. So sometimes you forget and you just get like so married to it. And you're like, no, you can use either use like a regular bit. And yes, Dave has confirmed they do make shorter ones. So probably get one of those. It's always helpful because this is not the first time that I've run into like, uh oh, now the drill doesn't fit type of situation. So now we have two of these guys and I'm going to clear off some of this table so we can try and assemble. And this might get a little tall, so I might have to switch views here, but let's move a couple things out of the way. And I'm going to try and clear off the table without splintering myself. You know, and just scrolling down my notes. All right, so let me just uh, put this on my shoulder here for a second. You know, wear, you know, wear the project here for a moment and watch your ears. Scrapey scrape. All right, guys, not a word about the splinters. Don't jinx it. Don't jinx it like I already have with this with this stream quite a few times. So let's get our this one right here. And that's gonna go there. And this guy. We'll go something like this. Let me check my notes. Is that how it goes? No. Oh, I was about to screw it up already. I was about to screw it up because here's our propane tank and then here's our, uh, you know, our drawer. So I was about to put the drawer this way, like going inside in a very awkward way. So I'm going to try and move this closer to me like that and we can get one in and then the other. So I think I'm going to get the one closest to you guys first. And am I going to hit anything? So the idea is that, remember the pocket hole screws are on this side and on this side, and we're gonna screw in to this base right here. And so I'm gonna try and line this up all nice on the edge here, and then I'm gonna try and line this one with the outer edge of our slat right here. I'm gonna try and line him up. So theoretically, that is the, yeah, what we're, what we're trying to do. So let me glue up 
Oh, and I just hit the mic, so sorry about that, guys. I'm going to glue up his little legs here. Oh, so um, Silvio Jose has a really good suggestion. So what he's saying in Portuguese is sometimes if you put a little bit of um, soap on the threads, it just goes in like butter. So that's a really good um, that's a really good suggestion. Actually, I never thought about doing that. So Silvio Jose, muito obrigado, muito boa dica essa de usar o sabão na na uh, no parafuso. Então é, vai vai bem mais fácil do que do jeito que eu tô fazendo. <laughs> então vai pondo aí mais dicas para todo mundo. All right, so I am like fiddling around trying to find what I need, which is, you know, this. So we need to go ahead and put in our pocket hole scrolling bit. And uh, let's start. So how am I going to clamp this? Should I just go for it? Maybe I should just go for it. Let's try and go for it. And then I can always back out the screw if it totally screws up. Yeah. We can always do that. I'll back out the screw and we'll, we'll act like it never even happened. I'm just taking out the... Uh... Oh, check the top then bottom measurements before you fasten them. Oh, look at Merlin being all like, you know, sensible here. There's none of that here. We don't accept any sensibleness, but darn, I'm going to have to do it because he's got a point. And Inax is leaving us um, for now, but he will be here in spirit. Ooh, perfecto. 20 and a half guys on either side. So we're good there. Merlin had a, a good idea. So I'm going to try this uh, unclamped and see what happened. And keep it square. Yes. You know what? I should probably put this, lean it. I should probably lean it but it's already like so nice like this. So I think I'm gonna try and go for it. Famous last words, people, I know. I'm about to, to find out why I should have just leaned this thing, but I can't help myself. I just can't sometimes. Okay, I'm holding the square against it and I'll just go slow. that worked normally like I have to clamp these down because they either spread apart or they twist or something the gap top and bottom the gap top and bottom which which gap gel is in the house awesome he has arrived So Merlin, do you mean the gap top and bottom here, which we just measured? Explain yourself. Sometimes we need like little pictures or, you know, gifts or something for each other. So we know what we're talking about sometimes. But guys, I think, I think that went okay. And when I um, screwed it in, the glue just went, you know, bleh out the side so I know I have like a nice tight you know sometimes when you don't clamp it down and then you screw it in it separates and you get this weird little gap and that might be what Merlin is talking about at the bottom between the top and the bottom of the thing but it doesn't look like we have that here so I'm like yes yes so let's get this nice and square and I want to try and budget out just a whoop too much there and just get that so it's no movement on the square there so that's nice and I'm gonna try the same thing <laughs> I'm, I'm getting away with uh, some some bad habits here never good Whoop. let me 
back it out just a little bit. I'm going to use my head for more leverage. All right, let me back it out. It's probably not going through the hole properly. And sometimes that's because there's too many wood chips. Clean it out. Oh, I see what he's saying. So Merlin is saying measure this way. Yes. So, excellent. Yeah, excellent. 13 and a half. So Merlin has a squared every single way around. I get what he's saying. Um, better than just eyeballing it. I'm going to start with this one and see if I can get it to, to go. Big mean dog says, the dog says woof. Hey, big mean dog. Uh, let's see if I can get this. I'm going to try and just blow this stuff out of the hole. Yeah, that's, that's super pro. Super pro. All right. Merlin is saying, good job. So here's the thought as to why this is not going in. I'm going to run this by... By you guys that doesn't make sense though I was about to say it's gonna sound stupid but I don't hide you know sometimes when you think of a dumb thing so I'm not I'm not gonna hide it from you guys so I was thinking this is drilling in and we have pocket hole screws coming in so what if it's you know colliding with the pocket hole screws but this one on this end shouldn't be hitting any pocket hole screws so I take that back I think it's just not going through the hole properly and sometimes you feel right where it sits pretty well so that might be might be pretty good there also this leverage isn't the greatest if this were on the floor then i could go more like that all right maybe not the negotiator but the bear hug the bear hug will definitely do it give it a little love and let's see that I didn't mess anything up. Oh my gosh, perfection, guys. All right, so we're going to use the bear hug technique. Yeah, for whatever reason, they went in super easy on that side, and then they started giving trouble on that side. I think it's from time to time they want to make sure I don't get too confident and, you know, to, to like, I got this, people. Yeah, we got this. Yeah, it likes to... Make, put me in my place sometimes. So I'm just going to shove this forward. And maybe this view will be better. I don't know. Yeah. Because I'm going to be working kind of like back here. You guys might be able to see that better. And it's... Oh, sorry, camera. Yeesh. Sorry. I see. I see. It's, it's all wiggling. All right. So you guys might be able to see kind of this situation a little bit better. But we're going to do the same thing. Right? We are going to do the same thing. Yeah. Yes, look at it in my notes. So this will go here. And then we have our drawer and we have the area for our propane tank. And then we're gonna put like a little um, shelf here. And then we're going to unite everything. But I need my casters for that. So I'm gonna do the same thing. And my pocket hole screws are on the outside because they're going to be covered with our decorative slats. So I'm just trying to strategically figure out where I, where I put them. And why don't we just do this so I can uh, put some glue on here. And I see you guys on, uh, on Instagram. You're probably struggling a little bit to see what's going on. I'm also multi-streaming or simultaneously streaming on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And you can find the links in my bio or just by going to those platforms and searching Gearhead Diva. You should be able to find me. That way you get a little bit better view. A little bit easier than uh, this jungle gym situation that you got going on here. I guess you guys also have kind of a jungle gym situation, so. 
And Randy Mark saying, throw that screw out. It's rounded enough, likely. You're not wrong. <laughs> I'm not going to. You are not wrong. But what's in is in. I'm going to leave it. So, yeah. You are not wrong. So, I'm going to do the same thing here. And just give it a quick test. And that's looking pretty good. And before screwing it in, using the ye old Merlin uh, measuring here, let's make sure that everything is looking pretty good. And we have like a, oops, a little 20 and a half ish going on here. And then we should have a 13.5 situation going on here. And we do. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing and kind of freehand uh, screwing it. Let's see if I can uh, keep pushing my luck here. And I'm going to hide. I'm going to hide over here for a second, you guys. So if this, this goes really well, I can be like, it looks wonderful. And you'll be like, oh, you're kicking butt. And I'll be like, yeah, just don't look over here. All right. <laughs> the square went flying. It's like, don't put me near that angle. It's not going to be square. Just don't put me anywhere near there. But it's square. So let's keep going. I am defying, uh, defying like uh, common sense here. Should have this clamped down. All right, just making sure there's no gaps, because that would—that's what happens when you don't clamp down. But we're pretty good. It just uh, spilled out the glue, which is nice. And let's see, looking good there. And let's now get this guy a little bit more lined up and square. So he needs to come in. And for this, I might actually have to clamp because this leg just wants to kind of come out a little bit. And so let's clamp him in. This is what I call Clampy Craig. It's like Jenny Craig diet. We're just going to put him on a little bit of a diet and slim down this gap right here just a little bit so it goes back to 13.5 there we go Ooh, that was big enough. a little bit more actually that is pretty good clampy craig you are doing well but i might move you you were about to knock stuff down. So I'm gonna move like this. There. One more measure. Just like Merlin said. And the up and down. And up and down. All right, people. This is like our final major structural and then we're going to put a little shelf on this and we're looking pretty good Let's see if this will also need a bear hug oh i might have over clamped over clamped people how's our opening Ooh, it's a little tight let me unclamp there we go. The clamp budge just a little bit. I made our situation a bit tight. There. All right. go one more check before the final one goes in and we good nice all right people
There, so we have our base attached to our vertical supports. And I'm gonna turn this around so we can all see it. Voila! And do this, this type of thing. All right, we'll push it back so you guys can actually see it. And we've got, um, <laughs> Joe caught me. He's like, glad to see you're wearing your safety glasses. I'm like, mm, okay, you know, yeah, you got me there. Uh, so now we have our propane area. We have our drawer area, and we're gonna put this drawer in next week. And we're gonna be covering the outer edges with our nice slats, you know, our cedar picket fence slats, so you don't see any of these pocket holes or anything like that. And we've tried to strategically hide them as much as possible. So now, what is left to do? Shall I put on the top or the shelf? Let me see, kind of like what my chicken scratch said. All right, so we're gonna try and put the top on. So let me see what the, the best view for this thing is. Maybe if I move some of this stuff and move this here or here. I'm gonna try and get this top going. So the idea is that these two slats right here, this slats, this one and this one, should marry up with these feet. Should marry up with the feet. And, uh, you know, let's see. And I'm gonna put the pocket holes facing upwards because we're gonna put a countertop on top of this. So no one's gonna see all this, you know, hot mess right here. So I'm gonna do this jobber which I can already see is not gonna work because it's going to hit the equipment. So uh, this will look like that. And so I think I'll just kind of leave this sitting here and maybe we'll work on the shelf, which is like right here. And by leave it sitting up here, probably I shouldn't leave it sitting up here because it's just gonna fall on my head. <laughs> we all know how that's gonna go. So let's um, figure out this shelf situation and then I can put this on the floor put this on top and then go for it. Maybe I can like fit it here or something like that uh, for us. So let me do that and then not have to lift it back up on the table for you. So let's just change this up. So let me get the uh, wood for the shelving and I'll be right back. And step over. All righty. So how do I plan out this shelf? All right, so we're gonna, oh, we gotta drill more pocket holes, oh my gosh. Uh, so yes, we're going to do a shelf kind of like here, you know, this kind of type of business right there. And uh, you know, that way we have some stuff here and some stuff here and plenty of room. So let me do pocket holes and I think I wanna do them like right here. Um, and so this one does not require pocket holes. What did I draw? Okay, yes, yeah, so this one does not require pocket holes. Just these two, and two and two is what we're doing. So let me switch up the drill bit. And so Instagram people, if you're finding you're uh, not seeing a lot of this, uh, head over to YouTube or Twitch or uh, Facebook so you see the full view and what we're building is a barbecue grill cart uh, that's gonna have some cool Arduino features so we got this and the pocket holes grill there we go there's like so much stuff on the table I can't find what I'm looking for so let's get this clamp down and going through here there we go and scooch it over First, let me get rid of all the, the ickies. I'm just gonna unjam it up by sticking a pencil in there. 
There we go. And we'll put two on this side. Two happy little pocket holes, just like Bob Ross would like. You just never do one, you know, it needs a friend. So we're gonna give it its uh, pocket hole friends. And one more. little chips out. A lot of vacuuming to do with all these chips, but I might procrastinate and do it tomorrow. Let me see if I can get away with doing it tomorrow. So I'm basically just going to repeat on this one and then we are done pocket holing today. That's awesome. Put this shelf up. There we go. Abba now is saying it's already taking shape. Uh, so yeah. Oh, um, no início é difícil ver. É difícil ver o que tá acontecendo, mas agora já tá, já tá ficando mais fácil ver o final que vai ser. We got one more side, people, and we are done pocket holing. And I have made a verb out of it. Yes, pocket holing. Two pocket hole. Kurt Benny, it looks like you're trying to say something, but it looks like the whatever thing is uh, blocking it. So sometimes it thinks like, sometimes the chats get um, moderated or whatever um, automatically, not by any human. And so sometimes if you see that I'm not getting to you, try asking it in a different way and sometimes you can bypass. You can bypass the filter. Sometimes it's, it thinks you're trying to ask something nefarious when you totally are not because I know you're not. So we had one guy that said, um, because he knows I have two dogs, show me your puppies. So of course, YouTube shut that down, you know, but it was completely innocent and it was actually because I actually have two dogs. So sometimes you got to ask it in, in a different way to, to just uh, get it not to... Take your comment out. So I see Kurt Benning is trying to say something. Uh, Dave uh, Beck saying, first grilling chicken drumsticks. Heck yeah, that's what I'm, the first thing I'm going to grill on this thing is chicken drumsticks. I love chicken drumsticks. And also, uh, Dave always uh, greets me with a buffet of chicken drumsticks before every stream. So I start every stream super hungry. So what I'm doing here is just laying the shelf on top of this existing bottom to see that I got my measurements right. And it looks like it did because look, once we attach it to this, there is no overhang. So it's not like I cut this too long where now it's like overhanging like that. And I'll move this stuff for you guys. So it's like overhanging. It's pretty much flush. Like that's the idea that this entire thing here is flush. So what I'm gonna do now is attach these shelf pieces here and then we're gonna try and attach this to here and for this it might be best that I lean towards you guys not lean back lean back but lean forward lean forward so let's see if I can move this start moving some of the stuff out of the way for our massive leaning that we're gonna have to do and first I'm gonna push this and this might this might scrape all right so that way I can uh, glue this shelf together kind of over here and maybe I can turn it. There we 
we go. So I'm going to put it with the pocket holes facing up and our shelf is going to go over here. And the reason for that is that we're going to have our decorative uh, picket fence slats. And so it's going to cover all these hideous pocket holes. So that's the strategy, people. I'm sticking with it. So again, I'm going to use a little bit of glue and I don't have any soap nearby or else I'd love to try the soap idea that one of you guys had. And just make sure this is square. That is looking good, people. Looking good. And this is going to be kind of a weird, you know, screwing into, but I'm going to, I'm going to give it a try. Let me switch this out. And I should probably clamp this one. So let's see if this is long enough. No, denied. Let me get that bigger one. Let's see if I can do this in a way that doesn't poke me in the stomach and doesn't poke you guys in the stomach. All right. So let's see if I can do something to this, to this nature here. Got a little bit of twist. Let me untwist it. And then I have to decide the back and the front of this, but I'll figure that out. Okay, so I'm just making sure this piece, or where are you guys? Oh, there you guys are. This piece isn't twisting and this piece isn't twisting and that they are square and they are. So I'm gonna go for it. And this is a little odd with this in the way, but at least if I get it started, I think I'll be, I'll be in a good place. Oil or WD-40 would work in a place of soap. So Merlin is right, and I do have WD-40 um, over yonder. Oh, we are so close. We are so close. And this is, um, the spinning is more just that I don't have a leverage. So let me see if I can put this in a way where I actually can bear hug it or something. Let's make sure it's not twisted and we're still square. And let me see if I can do it this way. much better. So let's see if we can do it without the clamp this time. So we got one in and we are still square. So let's see now that I can hug it better this way. Not have to twist so much. There we go. And then I use the belly. There we go. It's always good for something, the belly. You know, you can sit there and uh, use it to anchor things in. And I think I forgot to measure this piece to make sure it is indeed my 16 inch piece and this is my 13 and my 13. Woof. All right, crisis averted. So I'm going to do the same thing and glue this end together. And I think what that looks like, uh oh. The camera, it fell asleep. Let me see if I can uh, wake it up. There we go. There we go. It's like you haven't used me in a while. I'm kind of getting sleepy. So let's see if I can do the same thing here. And see how square we are. All right, no movement in that square. So that's looking pretty good. And I'm gonna do what Merlin said. You know, let's just uh, let's just uh, keep with the good. And we have a nine inch there, which is exactly what we want. And nine inches here. So that is all looking pretty good. Doing a little bit of the Merlin, the Merlin measure. 
All right, let me move this out of the way because that's going to be pretty, uh, pretty disastrous there. All right, then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Let's see if I can put this away now, as in like completely in my way, but <laughs> for now. And we're not getting any, any, you know, like wiggling. So it's, it's pretty straight, you know, only a hair. So let's see if we can now attach it to here. And rather than trying to like hold it and being all trying to attach it, I'm going to be more realistic this time and find a way to lean this thing in a way where we can do this. So let me move some of the things out of the way. And we got ourselves a grill cart and we're about to put the shelving on. Let's see the best way to do this. The nice thing guys is that this isn't very heavy. So that's pretty good. And we don't have a ton more components to add. Like the drawer is not gonna add a ton more weight, you know, or anything like that. So where do I want this? Ten and a half is what I said. Okay. And I don't remember why I picked that measurement, but it's what I picked. So uh, this is the bottom and that's the top. So I want it 10 and a half inches from the top. So let me turn this in a way where I can measure a little bit easier and maybe give you guys a much better view of my measuring skills. So, and uh, was it 10 and a half? Why can't I make my digital stuff bigger, like chicken scratch? So here we go. And you can make your shelf any, you know, height you want. Maybe you don't want a center shelf. Maybe you want to store like a whole other uh, propane tank. And, you know, I, I actually have two spares. You know, I, I for sure am not going to run out that's for sure especially grilling that's the worst when you run out and we're going to do the same over here and that's ten and a half there lost my other mark. I'll just do another one. There we go. There we go. This will help us determine where to put our shelf. So let me find a way where I will be able, cause the pocket hole screws are gonna be facing you guys. So, the, and the shelf is gonna be here. So somehow I will have to dolphin my way up and over the shelf to pocket hole screw it. So I might actually, instead of doing that, as fun as that sounds, I might actually turn it this way a little bit more and see how that looks. So. So you guys see it best this way and it would go, you know what? I might be able to do it. Yeah, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for it. So let's make sure this is all squared up and let me glue our ends. And it's always a good idea to glue the pocket hole screw going in, but because I didn't 100% plan this out. I was kind of afraid to do that. And what if we have to take a piece of wood out that we screwed in much, much earlier and now it can always be done, but I didn't want to start destroying things. 
So let me see if I can get a clamp on this. That's looking good there. Did you stay? Yeah, you did. So let me grab, where did that clamp go? I'm gonna call it, there it is. Let's see what we can do here and maybe do one at a time. There we go. Okay, that's looking good. I just need to move it because it's budged for my 10 and a half. And that red is not moving, that square. So we're probably square. And let me give it one last final It's moved. I knew this this shelf was going to be the toughest portion to get done. And I think I'm going to do two clamps. I'm going to do one down here and I'm going to do one in up up there because it just wants to to twist. There we go. So that's square like that. Get it nice and tight and let's square up this one and let me go grab another clamp. So for this I got to origami my way through and and down and grab another clamp and then origami my way through all right so and maybe I should put the pole in this way that way it's not hitting me in the eyeball as is typical all right so let's try and get this part here squared up and then we should be okay, I guess. All right, yeah, no movement there. A little bit of movement here. So let's, let's get this guy fixed. And I'm gonna use the negotiator just to kind of move him a little bit. David Beck was like, oh, you're going to make dolphin no noises? I just totally ruined the dolphin moment. And this just needs to bend this way. All right. Let's go for it, people. Let's go for it. I got two pocket hole screws. And I cached one container. So now let's bust open another container. So this is a container of 50. We've used 50 so far after I put these two in. It will be 50 and that will be 52. And that's it at least for the frame. I got glue on me, <laughs> but just for the frame. And then maybe a couple more pocket hole screws as this project you know, progresses, like for the drawer and stuff like that. So let's see if I can get this started in this very weird position. All right, that went in rather smoothly. Let's see how we're looking. All right, I just need to bend this towards me a little bit as I screw it in. So. I'm gonna just turn a little bit more like this, put the negotiator over there, and use my chin uh, to push this back that way just a little bit to get it more square. And so I'm going to love it up as I screw screw it in. That's pretty square. Well, oh, come back here square. There we go. Yes, almost no movement in that square. So we're pretty square there. And let's see if we can replicate this, even if we got to use the cheek to uh, get things uh, rolling. So, all right, so this just needs to be pushed in a little bit more. So the cheek's got to go the other way. And we're good there. So we've used 50 screws. This will be 52 for this stream, I think. And... And 
going to use my shoulder. There's some gymnastics here, people. Yeah, David Beck is saying, great idea, holding the drill upside down seems to work better. I think it's, it's for whatever reason, it's just like a leverage thing. It just seems to, to like that a little bit better. All right, so I'm just going to hold the square once more. And we're square, so I'm just going to use my shoulder and my cheek to kind of just hold things so it doesn't decide to twist on us. Look away, look away. All right. Use a speed square to check, to scribe your line. You will be able to check your alignment, says Merlin. Very, very true, very, very true. Um, so we're looking good, like no movement there, no movement there, no gaps either in the, you know, like gaps towards the corners there. So we're good there. I think we're, we're pretty square. And so we can try and add the top. So for this, I think the best thing to do might be to put this on the floor and I might try and just move this table away. Uh, if you guys can't see it. And we're going to put the top on and what you're going to notice is after that it'll probably be tough for me to lift like hoist this back on the table so i'll kind of like uh explain it explain it uh here real quick and let me just put these clamps on the floor where i'll step on them better yet i'll wait over here all right who's who thinks i need a bigger work table we need like a giant and like a ceiling mounted camera, just like a bigger bird's eye view. This guy needs to go a little bit uh, taller here. And let me put the negotiator away because here we are going to do our final pocket hole screwing. So I lied, you know, we still have some uh, pocket hole screws to go in. So basically, as you can see, let me get this guy off. Not bad, people, for a one-person build here. You know, you got to use the cheeks, the belly, the shoulders, whatever it is you need to do to get it done. So I'm going to flip this over here. And our barbecue grill cart here is taking some, some form. So we have our propane tank storage here. We have our drawers, which are going to go a shelf for something and a shelf for something. And then we're going to put a top on. So what do we do with this? I mean, are we just going to start putting weight on this without support? Uh, so no, I actually have another piece of wood similar to this to go on this end. But now, decision time. Here is the, uh, you know, the base. We're going to put two casters on that end right there. And then the wood is going to come down and actually the cast, say the casters, it's three inch wheels. So for argument's sake, let's say it's a height of four inches. So this piece will come from the top and then go four inches past the bottom here to account for the casters. And so we'll just be able to lift this thing and wheel it around. And at first I wanted to put all four casters all the way around. And the reason I went against that is that if you have like a brick or a stone patio, the cart could rock, it might not be even. And you could try and shim it, but you're, you're shimming wheels, even if they're locked. So perhaps a better thing is to have those wood stands going in because you can shim those and you can get a much steadier cart. So to remind those of you that are joining kind of uh, late, this is what we're building. It's based on this and we're gonna customize it further. Like that propane tank, I'd like to put some kind of door there. I like the drawer idea. Those are the cedar, cedar picket, uh, fence slats that you see on the shelf and you can see where the big utensil spatula is hanging that's the part that's missing currently from our cart and the reason I haven't put those on quite yet and we're not going to do it this stream is that the casters are arriving so I'd like to put the casters on first and then put those two slats but they're going to go in with pocket hole screws just like we've been doing so I'll go ahead and do that and for the next stream we're going to be building all the rest of the elements of 
this cart. But before we wrap up the night, I'd like to get the tabletop up here. So I'm talking to the wrong you. You guys, there, I'm gonna get the tabletop. So in order to do that, uh, I'm gonna put this on the ground, I think, because I don't think I'll be able to screw, you know, on my tippy toes. So let's see if I can uh, put this on the ground without uh, going too crazy. And in order to do that, let me move the top. I'm gonna shift the table forward, so hopefully I don't uh, hit you guys. I'm gonna shift it forward just a little bit. And it's locked on this side, but I'm gonna try and lift and lift and clamp the top with the drawer with the drawer brace. Oh guys, I don't have to put it on the floor. I just had an idea. I can just do like we did the shelf. Let me see if I can roll this and get it to sit flat on the table like this. Ooh, so the top will be near me because I highly doubt you guys will be able to see anything on the floor. So I'm going to do that. And uh, sorry, Instagram people, you're kind of getting obliterated here. But for a better view, I'm also streaming this on YouTube, Facebook and Twitch. I see some of you like, what are you building? You know, because you're looking through a, a little screen there. So this is probably going to be somewhat impossible for a lot of you guys to see. So let me see if I can switch this here and try and put the top on like this. Or I might be able to get enough space here and put the top on like this there we go this is probably not what merlin had in mind but for whatever reason this is what inspired you know when i read your comment this is like the inspiration that came to me yeah so listen i try people so what did i say i wanted to put the pocket holes for this on the outside facing this way and the reason for that is because we are going to have, and I think this is the wrong way, but we're going to have a countertop on top of here. So none of this is going to be seen. So we're going to put the ugly side facing up. Jal saying it's looking good. And uh, Dave Wall says, put the table upside down, then put the rest on after upside. Too late. That's, that's a good idea, and that's probably what, what I should have done instead of uh, trying to put all of the supports and, you know, with my face and all that kind of stuff. But listen, it involves all parts of your body that get lazy. So I'm like, face, start working, face. <laughs> so, um, now I am just going to try and clamp this all together oh there you guys are i'm going to try and clamp this all together so let's use some wood glue but first let me make sure i got this right is this the 13 yes so theoretically this should be lining up at a 15 mark let me see So, glue, putting glue on all these little ends right here. Bill's coming off the table a little bit, but we're going to do the best that we can with this and lay it just like that. Now, over here, I'm just going to, because it's wanting to fall off the table that way, I'm just using my brute force to maintain it. And what I'm going to do is clamp it from here to here, where it's kind of tough for you guys to see. But I can do it. Stay there. Stay there. Right. Let's 
So I have pocket hole screws, uh, as you can, uh, you guys can't see any of this. Hmm. All right, anyways, so this beam right here that um, I'm showing you here has pocket hole screws on the outside. So I'm gonna be in here pocket hole screwing into this um, tabletop from the outside and it's not really the tabletop. The tabletop will go on top of this fake tabletop. But I'm just gonna make sure that this is square. second I'll be right back guys All right, so that camera is just uh, falling asleep on us. It's like, I am over this project. All right, I am back. I think I keep hearing the door. <laughs> All right, so what are we doing? We are pocket, pocket hole scrolling. Surprise, surprise. So let me prep. We are putting in our final pocket hole screws. All right, you guys can't see much of this, but... You'll see the other side, hopefully. All right. So that one's done. Yeah, no movement. That's good. No rocking. Except for this stuff falling underneath my table. Here we go. So, this is getting tougher because the, uh, it's just getting bulky, people, bulky. All right, so we got these two done. Now there's two pocket holes right there that we need to drive two screws in to be able to get it to do its thing. So let me see if I can give you guys this. That might be a better view. Yes, there we go. So, right here and right here, I'm gonna try and drive them in. And, oh, I didn't even do these yet. Here I am moving ahead. All like, I got this, people. Nope, nope, not yet. There we go. And where's the clamp? So, yes, more stuff that you cannot see. So much fun. There we go. This is going to line up nicely. I'm quite surprised. Quite surprised. All right. So, pocket hole screws that you cannot see. I got two more going in. And one more.
David's trick of making this the drill upside down and that side is done like for reals this time for reals it's done so now we just have to screw in here and here so let's see if we can do this in a way that's that I can get it in and you guys can actually see so let's see what we got going on here we got these two and we got these two so let me clamp this and let's try and get these two guys in first. Hmm. <laughs> How to do this. I'm just gonna remove these clamps on this side because it's preventing it from, from turning. There, now we can freely turn and see what we got going on. It's like now I don't know which way is top, which which way is down. But here we go. And actually, I am going to screw in the top first, and then flip it over and screw in the bottom. So yes, I am making this far more complicated than it needs to be. So let's uncomplicate it. Get this side done. And we just have to make sure that this all looks good. And this is it square. Guys, this is nice. Look at that. So let's see now. This has to, this will be interesting. How am I gonna get in there? I might just have to do this again. And, oh no, I'm gonna need a shorter, some kind of shorter drill bit. You know what, I have one. I'm gonna go to my toolbox and I, I have just a regular old plain square drill bit and that should solve a lot of this. This is what happens when you just don't design, you start building and you're like, oh no, it doesn't fit. So I also have, all right, I'm gonna get my little square drill bit. I'll be right back, I'll be right back. Actually, you're not even gonna go on intermission because that's how fast I'm gonna be right back. All right, where are you? It's a little square drill bit. I have going on here so I have a whole bunch of drill bits here and I'm just gonna look through them real quick and see if I can find a good substitute Ooh, this one might work he's all happy in there oh he's slightly too big all right keep looking we can solve this problem, people. We can solve it. There's got to be a square one in here somewhere. And then it, and Axe is saying it's really coming together. David Beck said puppy alert. Uh, yeah, either puppy alert or I thought um, there was something at the door. I'm really waiting for those casters. I was hoping they'd come in so I can just, uh, you know, stick the, stick the piece of wood on here. You know, I'm afraid to do it. I'm like chicken uh, to do it in case it's the wrong, like, you know, the manufacturer size isn't quite right for the overall dimensions. And then you're like, oh man, and you already cut your piece of wood. That's always a bummer. So I know I have a square bit. Now, where did it go? These are all too big. 
No, don't tell me I'm thwarted by this thing until I find my square bit. Sometimes you can kind of fudge a, uh, a torps in there. I've done that before. Sometimes it can be done. This is too small. I might be able to fudge this enough. All right, so we're gonna start it with a torx bit and then switch if, if we need to. All right, let's see here. to kind of get a better bend by doing this. An extendo. Sometimes the answer isn't always going short. Sometimes it's going longer. Okay, hopefully we're not gonna have this problem on as much on the other side because I might have more clearance. Actually looking at it, I probably will have this problem on the other side. Well, thank God we didn't put these pocket holes on the other side of the piece of wood because that's where the drawer is. We would have never been able to get up in here. So now that this extender is working really well, let me try and extend this even more. If the problem cannot be solved, we'll solve it. Not the best grip, but let's see what we can do. If I bear hug it enough, or even get on that other side, we might be able to do it. Let's see if I can turn this a little bit more. And unfortunately, you guys may not be able to really see what's going on. But extending it also worked pretty well. It's like moving stuff all the time. All right, let's see if I can get in here a little bit better. Not too much better, but you know. All right, I have it mostly in. So I'm gonna mostly in the other one and then once we get this top on, I can then put it on the floor and really jam it in the rest of the way. Unfortunately, you guys won't be able to see that, but the top will be mostly in. <laughs> so let me just get this guy while the clamp is on. While the clamp is on, holding it for me. There we go. So this is what we ended up with. And what I'm gonna do is just put this on the floor and jam it in. But this at least will give you guys an idea. Yeah. Oh, what we got going on? This is our grill cart. Oh, sorry, watch your, watch your mic. I'm just gonna. I'm not, I'm not going into everything, but anyways, let's see if I can pull this back far enough to see what we got going on here. So yeah, we've got a good framework for our cart and I'm just going to wheel this, you know, a little bit towards me so you guys can see this, the situation here. And so we have our grill, our propane tank storage. We have our drawer, which is going to pull out towards you guys area. We have a shelf. We have a whole other shelf and all this is gonna be covered in our cedar picket fence slot, which I'm gonna get cut up for you guys. Now that side is gonna get two casters and on this side, we're gonna get our wood, um, you know, our wood beam to complement the casters. So as soon as the casters come in, I can cut them to size so that way we can lift this and then be able to roll it anywhere we want. We're gonna be putting a countertop on it. And so far the features are a spice rack, uh, a flip 
countertop. So we're going to put a nice countertop on this, but then we're going to make a folding like leaf style countertop to expand the prep area. Heck, maybe two people can even sit here and eat, you know? And then after that, we're going to be attempting an Arduino thermometer for a smoker because you can convert your propane, um, you know, grill into a smoker. And then after that, we are going to make a robotic condiment caddy that's just going to go up and down the table and serve you up ketchup, your favorite sauces, mustard. I like a good mustard on a hot dog, especially the kind with the little seeds. So all that we're going to do. So for next week, we are going to complete the cart. And then the following two weeks, we're going to be working on our robotic tech components. So thank you guys so much for joining me. You guys on Instagram uh, have been awesome. And yes, you know, I roll on Instagram. It's a little tough to see things, but you can always make the jump to the other platforms. And thank you guys for joining me too, especially our Wrench Army members. If you want to watch our past uh, projects, if you want to catch the whole stream, that entire archive is available to our wrench army members plus project plans code everything if you just prefer to you know read it on paper and things so i will catch you next monday wrench army members we start our plasma ball this week so stay tuned for that announcement and thank you so much for joining me tonight for our barbecue cart do we know i will catch you guys all later